Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Anand and I'm going to be giving you a short introduction to Mapper. So what is Mapper? Mapper is something that gives you a skeletal view of your data set through a lens, something like magical X-ray vision. So let's go forward and see what happens. So as I said this, so theoretically speaking, it gives you a superficial complex by using the nerve of a cover, which you pull back using a lens. Well, a lot of complicated terms, but let's just simplify it. And so what happens is that you're splitting up a data into bins based on a filter, and then following which we cluster our bins and then just make it into a nice graph. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll just go over some of the theoretical prerequisites, and then we will see how things work. So uh, before that, let's just see, see it once. So I have a point cloud. I, fit, I colored it by some filtering it, that's my lens. Then I bend it and then I clustered it. This is sort of what we will be doing. So let's go forward. So, so let's just formalize things. So we have a simplicial complex. So this is a set of points, line segments, triangles, and their high dimensional counterparts. All of them just bunch up together. And then we can talk about the nerve of an open covering. So I have an open covering UI uh, of a SpaceX. And then the nerve is a simplicial complex whose vertex set is the index set I. And a simplex in nerve of U is spanned by vertices I1, I2, and so on till IK. If and only if U1 intersection, U2 intersection, so on till UK is non empty. Uh, sorry about the typo over here. It should be, uh, is not equal to phi. Uh, next, uh, we look at what are lenses and define pullbacks. Suppose we have a continuous function f from x to z. X is the space where I have all my points. Z is called my parameter space. And I have a covering UI for Z. So F is called a lens function. Uh, F is continuous. So F inverse of UI gives me an open cover for X. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of refine it. And that's what I mean by talking about refine pullback. And I'm going to refine it in the sense that I'm going to like split up all my open sets into their connected components. So my cover for X will consist of various connected components of UI, F inverse of UI. Okay, so now we have the definitions. Let's go and have a look at it in action. So I've already drawn up and written the stuff so that we can manage time efficiently. So, so I've taken a point cloud in the form of a circle and I just put it on the plane. And now this is my parameter space X, this thing over here on the left. And then on the right, I have my parameter space R. Sorry, this is my point cloud, point cloud X, point cloud. Uh, this is my parameterized space. And this is my lens function. Okay, so now I have considered an open cover. Uh, I'm not explicitly writing down what U1, U2, and U3 are because I have not written anything over here explicitly, but I'm considering three open covers, which are overlapping by sort of roughly 50%. So you can see one in blue, one in green, and one in yellow. Now, uh, what my lens function is, is I'm just going to project everything onto the y axis. So f of x comma y is equal to y. Next, what we do is we look at the inverse images for each of these open covers. So for u1, I end up coming here. For u2, I end up coming here. Uh, U3, I end up coming here. And uh, well, actually, if you notice, uh, these things will sort of overlap. So I'll have an op overlapping region over here. And then again, I will have another overlapping region over here. Okay, so that's good. So we have a lens, we have a cover, and we had a. So next, we look at the connected components also. So what we got is. We got one connected component in the inverse image of U1. We can see that. In the case of U2, so uh, if we look at the thing for U1, uh, we basically got something like this. In the case of U2, we got something like this. In the case of U3, again, we got something like this. So one connected component, two connected component, and again, one connected component. Uh, I've colored them accordingly. As you can see, purple, green, and yellow. Now, uh, using this cover, if I construct the nerve, I will get this. So, so it gives me a square. Uh, and if you observe, 
that this is pretty much similar to my point cloud, which is a circle. And that's one very nice thing. Both of them have the same homotopy type and I'm capturing the properties of shape. So this gives us a combinatorial representation of our data. Now, uh, the things that you need to know for implementing the algorithm is what are the inputs that you need and what are the decisions that you have to make? So the first thing that you need is a point cloud. Okay, a point cloud may be in terms of coordinates or else a distance matrix because that's what you largely care about. So it need not be a matrix space. You can just input a distance matrix and be happy with it. The next choice that you need to make uh, is a cover for your parameterized space. So how do you do it? So one very nice choice that's often made is that of considering some, some number of intervals, I've taken 10 over here. Well, in our example, we worked with three, and then you can just say, specify an overlap percentage. So you can give say n, inter n intervals, and then you can look at some epsilon percentage as overlap, and then you can just construct it. So that works nice. And then you need to choose a lens function f. Well, here I projected it. You can like just do KD, you can use a kernel density estimator, you can just projection, and you can do uh, make lots of other nice choices. Uh, you can maybe look them up and I might attach some references in the, at the end of the video. Uh, next is the choice of a clustering algorithm. So dbscan, KNN, these are popular algorithms. You can even do some kind of hierarchy clustering and many others. So that sort of uh, gives us an outline for what the mapper algorithm does. So that's all for this time. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Thank you.